Hey, hey, and welcome to another video. In today's video, I think we're going to make the game object class, which will be the class that every game object derives. Uh, it will be abstract, so we're not going to instantiate any game object class, but we're going to make an example class just to test it out today. I think we will also need to implement something to hold our position and something to hold our size. I know there are classes that like the point class, which is already in Java, but we're probably going to want to fill it with helper methods later on. So I think it will be better to make our own. Um, so let's get to it. Let's start by making the game object class. Uh, and I want it to be abstract, which means we can't instantiate it, but I still want to be able to have fields in here and other variables. I want to be able to say that all objects in my game are going to have a position, position. They're going to have a size, size. Let's start there. They have a position and they have a size. We don't have these classes yet, so we're going to have to make them now. And apparently there was no auto generate, so let's do it the old fashioned way. Let's create the position class. So my position is just going to be a, um, a private int x and a private int y. And and all of the units here are just going to be pixels, right? So let's just make actually alt insert. You can auto generate your constructor. Pick both of these. Uh, good. And then we'll also want getters. Great. Quick class. Let's do the same with our size class. So let's make a class called size. Let's give that a private int width and a private int height. And let's also alt insert, make the constructor, alt insert, make the getters. All right, now we have something to start working with. So let's make no. Actually, let's, ooh, I'm not sure how I want to do it. Actually, let's just make an empty construction constructor for now, game object. And let's just initialize these with some values. Like, let's say the position is, uh, let's say 50, 50. So it's not, it's not exactly at the top left. It's just a tad little bit in, uh, you know. And let's give it a size to, and let's just set that size to 50 by 50 for now. All right, so uh, all of our game objects are going to need public abstract, I think, abstract void update. So the thing about this is, uh, you can't instantiate this object, um, but for any class deriving from this object, uh, you need to provide an update function. So that's why we put abstract here, but you will get these and actually these need to be protected if we want to be able to do anything with them uh, in our deriving classes. So let's do that, but I also think that all of my game objects, um, since they're not going to be rendering themselves, they need to provide their graphics. So we're going to do that by saying that they give an image. And let's just call it get sprite. Okay, so this is how all of my game objects are going to look. So let's try to create an example, something that derives from game object. Let's just for now replace our square with our own square. So 
Let's make a class called square that extends game object. Okay, and so now what it's saying is that I need to implement the abstract methods. So let's do that. We have the update and we have the get sprite, which default returns null. And actually it can because the graphics object where we're gonna call draw image, it can handle null. It's just gonna not do anything. So there will be no exceptions or anything nothing's going to be drawn, which is awesome. It's probably what we want. So we already know that it has a position and a size from game object. We just want to make a, we don't need a constructor either because we set those. What we want to do, of course, is do exactly what we did before. So for every update, let's just say that position is equal to new position and in here we'll have position get x plus one and position dot get y however now for the sprite since we don't have any sprites yet we haven't loaded in any images or anything we're gonna have to make our own image in here and it's not that hard so there's something called a buffered image which is a type of image and we can just create it new buffered image and this thing takes an int width and an int height and an int image type and since we have a size we can just get that get the width size get the height and so buffered image has these constants which are the types that it can take and we're just going to do RGB for now. OK, and then we need to get the graphics just like we did before. Uh, let's make it a graphics 2D and call it graphics. And that is from image dot create graphics. Now we can paint on it just like we did before. But now it's an image with this size. So it's already 50 by 50 which means that when we do graphics, oh, first we need to set the color, set color. And I'm gonna go with, keep going with blue. And then we say graphics.fillRect. But now we wanna start at zero, zero, because we're just filling the sprite image. Uh, and the width and height are the same from size. Get width, size, get height. And then we do dispose like before, and then we can return the image. So this should just fill, make an image, make a sprite for us, which we can then use. Let's start by going to our game because we no longer want this rectangle. So let's just get rid of this rectangle. Uh, we don't want it anywhere here. Don't need this. But what we do need is something that holds our game objects. So let's make a list. And now it's saying that Java AWT list does not have type parameters, and it's because of this. So just say import java.utils.list. No, utils. Not sure, is it capital L? It was, capital L. Okay, so list game object, game objects. Uh, and then we have to instantiate the list. New array list. Okay, and then we'll have to add something. So let's add our new, new square. Okay, but in order for us to update the square, we need to call it from our update function. So let's go do this game objects for each game object, game object dot update. So it's as easy as that. And for the rendering, which is of course handled in the display right now, we have to go here and 
So this part we don't need anymore. So what we're going to do instead is, let's say game, get right. We need a getter inside of our game. Alt insert getter for game objects. So go back to display. Get game object for each game object. Then let's do graphics dot draw image, which takes in, let me show you, there are several different things, but we're going to use this first one, which is the actual image, uh, the position where it should be drawn, and also an ob image observer. And I'm not quite sure what these do. I've never used them. You can just pass in null and everything's fine. So let's do that. Let's first say game object dot get sprites. Game object dot get get po oh we didn't make a getter for that. So let's do that. Let's getter. Let's do the size as well. So now we have a getter for the position. Get x. Game object. Get position. Get y. And null. So let's see if we've gone all the way. Is there anything else we need to do? We put it in our game object. We have our square. It's got a position and a size. Let's just try it out. Let's see what happens. Look, it's doing exactly what it did before, but now we've set it up a bit better. So in the next video, maybe we can get some simple inputs going. That would be fun. All right. Thank you for this video. Bye.